Good morning everyone, I am Melvin Minacorpus and you know me as Maestro Melvin. And our topic for today is all about Honorio Bartolome de Jases, Gay Love. Let's begin with our discussion. These are the objectives for this lesson. First, discuss insights on the themes and message of the story. Second, analyze the writing style of the author. And lastly, reflect on the suggested message of the short story. Honorio Bartolome de Josa's short story, Gay Love, which was published in 2004 as part of Philippine literature, a history and anthology, tells the familiar story of two men, Mike and Benji, whose friendship develops into probably a romantic relationship. Ronald Baitan has translated Bartolome de Josa's short story from Filipino to English, making it one of the most popular stories in the Lad Lad anthology. Both versions of the story are told in first person, with Max's and Benji's perspectives alternated. This approach provides readers with both characters' perspectives and lines of thoughts about each other. In other words, both sides of the narrative. Honorio Bartolome de Jos, a native of Bulacan, is a novelist. He had previously been introduced to the world of homosexuality. He was a seminary student when he realized what he wanted to do with his life. As a result, he embarks on a quest to discover his true identity. He faced several challenges, but he persevered in his search for a more complete understanding of homosexuality and its role in society. Through his works, he highlighted the difficulties gay people face in today's judgmental, exploitative, and oppressive culture. Now that we know something about the concept of the story, allow me to narrate the summarized version of the short story. Mike was first introduced to Benji at a media company gathering. Then, they had a project in Zambales and the two of them became close. They drink, watch movies, and just eat together outside working hours every now and then. Benji once told Mike that he loves him when they were both in the bar. After that, they didn't talk about it for the rest of the night. Well, it's painful to be rejected, right? Especially if you started out as friends. You've had bad luck in love, and now you're feeling guilty because you've just deceived a dear friend and ruined a lovely relationship. Sad. Since he does not want to be hurt again, Benji is a bitchy bitchy gay. This is also why, once again, he was afraid of committing to another man. On the other hand, Mike and Carmi had recently split by the time Mike and Benji were close. They wanted to share a house in Benji's apartment in order to better understand what they really want from their relationship. Let's dissect the story more by breaking down the characters. First, we have Mike. A major character. The author of the story, Honorio Bartolome de Jos. He is a journalist who volunteered to cover the aftermath of the Mount Pinatubo eruption. He is also one of the story's main protagonists. He had a thing for Benji ever since and kept it to himself. Because of his love for Benji, he can say whether he's gay or not. Second, we have Benji, a major character and a focal character as well a project officer for a non-profit organization. He is a self-described bitchy bitchy gay who secretly fell in love with Mike and was the first to confess after their long friendship. Third, we have Joanna, a minor character. Mike was constantly bugged by Benji's co-worker because of her interest in his life. And lastly, we have Carmi, a minor character. Mike's previous girlfriend, now ex-girlfriend for two years, who was also involved in the Mount Pinatubo situation. She was introduced to Benji and she surpassed Carmi Martin in beauty. Mike had not yet gotten over Carmi. On the other hand, Benji was is skeptical. <laughs> Apparently by now, we can say that the short story contains the themes of friendship because Mike and Benji are still by each other's side in times of distress. Equality, because Benji's gender is irrelevant to Mike. And lastly, the right to love, 
because everybody has the right to feel loved regardless of their differences. We are now at the last part of our discussion and that is the essence of the story. The meeting of the two characters, their inevitable attraction to each other, the presence of a seemingly impossible feat, the resolution of said problem, and the optimistic ending, gay love reads like any other romantic fiction. At the same time, gay love implicitly condemns men's prejudices as shown by Mike's persistent doubts about his relationship with homosexual Benji. Mike expresses his appreciation for having someone like Benji in his life because he is able to freely express himself, to be emotional and have feelings about things such as his job and education, rather than having to lock it up and be mysterious about it, as his match of friends demand. As a result, he always secretly admits that he can't bear losing Benji, which is understandable. Benji is Mike's confidant and his only escape from the things that occupy his mind, job, his ex-girlfriend Carmi, and his match of friends' reactions to their friendship. Mike is also open to the possibilities that their relationship will explore because of the way the story ends. He decides that labels don't matter. And he asks himself, as well as the audience, what's wrong with a straight guy loving a gay man? It gives readers hope that a truly self-aware relationship, including love between a gay man and a straight man, is very much impossible. And that ends my report. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. My Esther Melvin is out.